Brother, uh, Mike Mahan, you come on up here. He's going to take a minute and tell us about their work and what they're doing. He's also got a book here. He's got some copies of it out there. He'll tell you about that, uh, to being a soul winner. Come on, brother. Say, uh, tell us what's going on here. Hey, everybody. It's glad to be here. It's always a joy to be with my sisters in the Lord. And the Amen. Amen. And it's always an honor to be able to do and say something for him. It's a privilege a lot of people don't get. Right. So my name is Aaron McMahon, and I'm the founder of a soul winning ministry called CPR Missions. All I want to do tonight is introduce herself, let us know you, let you know that we exist, what we do, and then maybe to, when time allows in the future, we can follow up with you. My wife is with me, Teresa, and if it wasn't for her, there may not be a CPR Missions because she does a lot of work behind the scenes that I couldn't get done. And our daughter, Destiny, is also a part. I've been a police officer for 15 years, a patrolman, and... I learned after a few years of, of uh, patrol work that just making these arrests for these drug dealers and, and other people, it wasn't always the, the, the best fix for the problem. The legal term for that is recidivism, where it's a rate on repeat offenders. Yeah. And I slipped up one day and I found an opportunity to witness to somebody and they received the gospel. And from that point on, I watched them from afar and it wasn't the same person. I saw firsthand the power of God in their life. Hey, Amen. Babe. So then I thought, well, what, knowing what I know now, how can I keep that quiet? I need to use this. So I began to use my job as a platform to witness. And back in my academy days, they taught us a thing called community policing. That means be friendly, make connections with the public. So I wasn't stealing from the company if I was paid to be friendly, as long as I didn't neglect my calls. Or right, whatever. yeah. But it got to where that's all I wanted to do was be a witness. So in February, on February the 5th of this year, the Lord called me, and if anybody's ever been called into the ministry, you know what I mean. That's Amen. A thing. Man. And he uh, spoke to my heart in our living room with my wife present in a way that only he could, not with a voice. And he said, do you want to work for me or not? Make a decision. And I was sitting in my big lazy boy chair, and I couldn't get up and make a phone call saying, hey, pastor, what's going on? Something's happened. The Lord would say, me and you, what do you want to do? And I says, well, I'd be foolish not to take you up on it. I said, I'll do, I'll go. And he was dealing with my wife's heart simultaneously because she had to agree. And she did. So the next day I went to work and says, guys, I've got to turn in the badge and the gun and I'm going to go full-time ministry. So what I do now is by invitation, when a church invites me, I spend some time daily in their communities and parks, public places, and I do one-on-one -on -one personal work. I begin with a track to open the door for a conversation and then I give them a plan of salvation. I'm going to give you a couple of stats this year, but I have to preface that. When I mention numbers, I'm very careful about that because soul winning is not a machine. Right. There are a lot of soul winning outfits that go door to door and they get a person to repeat a one, two, three prayer. Yeah. And because you did the thing, they check the box and they count it as a salvation. And if anybody has you doing that, you need to separate yourself from them. Right. Because that's baloney. Yeah. Right. Baloney. Amen. Yeah. Without the convicting power of the Holy Ghost in their heart and faith in the shed blood of Christ, there is no salvation. True. Man. So our ministry has a three-prong aspect to it. Firstly, it's to share the gospel. That's what I do daily. Okay. When I finally get to that church, I present my findings to them and to tell them this is in your backyard. If you want to support missionaries in foreign fields, that's a needful thing. But what about your neighbor? I led example X amount to the Savior in this past month at your park. Where are you at, people? Lovingly to encourage them, let's get moving. Amen. But two, it's to prepare the saints to take the gospel correctly and biblically out into the world. We do that when we get to the church by providing a book that my wife and I wrote. When I say my wife and I, I mean she. She just knew how I witnessed that she has enough sense to put it on paper. Yeah. I actually led her to Christ on her first date. Amen. So without her behind me going, hey, you better get busy. We've wasted enough time. I would probably be not taking it very seriously, admittedly. So we, we give you a book. It's free. They're on the back table as you go out. And it's the master soul winner's example of how he led people to himself by using the woman at the well and the rich young ruler and how he spoke to them and how he used the moral law that brings about the knowledge of sin and conviction. And then the good news of the gospel. And in both of those encounters, you had two different responses. She repented and believed. He didn't. So from that book, you should be able to read it and glean from it. 
Jesus's method, the Lord's method on how to soul win. So I hope that to help to you. We also put together a list of all the Bible verses you will need. And I teach people how to color code their Bible. So all your word verses would be in blue, per se. Your negative verses would be in red, your positive in yellow, and your eternal security verses in another. Yeah. So that way, when you're leading someone to the plan of salvation, you know I'm on the track to explain to them sin, death, hell, the judgment, because these are all red. Right. Now I'm to the point where I could explain that salvation is a, a gift by grace, through faith, and the finished work of the Savior, not of work, because that's yellow. Right. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, you know, where the gospel is laid out, that's yellow. So that's a good method that I use, but as you're studying it, you're supposed to get those words in your heart. Uh, because you're not always going to be able to sit down with somebody with an open Bible. The Lord will still honor it if you don't have an open Bible. But when you can, you want to put their nose in the book. Right. Because when they get a drink of that water, you want them to know where it came from. Amen. So although the Lord will honor your efforts, you don't want them coming to you as the authority because they're going to think often that you're the one that's got it. And you want to make sure that you stand on the King James Bible and point them to that. So don't you're not the authority. And thirdly, it's to fortify the local church. I believe in the local church. Our sending church is over in Sweetwater, Tennessee. We, that's where we're from, by the way. On the other side of the two hill that we had to wind around to get here. And what I mean by fortifying the church is that they are our sending church. They are our head. Under their blessing, we'll go out and, and, and serve in our ministry. But it's because of their backing. I don't think that we should be rogue. But when somebody makes a profession in our area, not only do I invite them to our church, but any other Bible-believing work that's in that area. I use a fellow named Spencer Smith's church finder on our website. So when somebody makes a profession, let's say they're in another county uh, or another state, I tell them to plug in their zip code, and I help them find a church in that community. All right? So when a person, when people pick us up, whether it be a church or an individual as a missionary, what, they're, what, they're, what we do is we give a, per, a, a person that makes a profession of salvation a new Christian packet printed by, usually we use James Melton's print ministry because the doctrine is pretty much on mostly, but we use it because he's got a good thing on uh, new Christians, how to understand the uh, gospel plan, how to rightly divide the scripture, why the KJV, and why not water baptism, things like that. So it could, at least the person could have some pointers in the right direction. There's a lot of people that get saved, but they're just kind of float. Yeah. So in good conscience, the only thing I can do is give them something a little extra, but I can't put them in my pocket and take them with me. All right, so we'll also give them a King James Bible. Okay, so let me give you a few stats. I'm eating up too much time. You're fine. So a few stats. And remember, I gave you a preface. When I give you a number, I don't know if this person saved or not, and I don't want to pat on the back. I quantify it so I can let people know this is kind of what's going on. So you can get a ballpark figure. So... In this newsletter, we put one out quarterly. This one's on our website, cprmissions.org. And it goes, uh, this one, see, this one ended in June, so the numbers are not up to date. But in the year 2023, from the streets of Knoxville, we do a homeless, my wife and I, along with the help of some people at Least Chapel, we do a homeless outreach where we give water and snacks to them to, to give their flesh some comfort long enough for them to talk to us to get the gospel in. We're not humanitarian, Okay. Uh, we've had 34 professions of salvation on the streets. Amen. My wife and I saw the Asbury fake revival going on, and we were wondering, is the gospel being preached? So we were trying to get a hold of somebody that was up there, and all we were seeing was TikTok videos and YouTube videos, but there was nobody with an open Bible, and I didn't hear any gospel. So we got in the car that night and drove to Kentucky, not to participate, but we saw a mission field. Amen. So we began at the door of the main chapel and worked our way back two or three miles of people. We had 17 professions of salvation. People came there looking for the Lord, but they didn't have anybody to tell. Right. People Amen. from Singapore, Canada, and all over Kentucky. And Amen. They were like the man at the, the, the pool of Siloam. They thought they had to get in the water for the miracle. They yeah. thought the Lord was in that chapel. Total this year, uh, we've had 198 professions of salvation as of June. Bless them. Man. Again, the way the Lord knows. Oftentimes, the Lord will show up. If, any, if there's any soul winners in here and you do personal work, it's very it's spiritual. It becomes very it becomes very real very quick. And the Lord will sometimes show up and speak through to you. That's right. To confirm to your heart, give it to Him. I'm using you. You're doing right just to, to bless you. Sometimes I've walked away from these encounter, encounters with a joy greater than it was when I got saved. Because He just does that. Kind of like a, a father would smile on his 
children. Amen. Okay, so lastly, if you want to know, I'm going to do one more thing. I don't mean to offend anybody, but I mean it, make it very real and very personal. He was right in saying, this is an elite group. You've got a very good pastor. I've watched him. and You already know that. I don't have to tell you that. I've watched him for a few years on certain topics that I wanted to know what he would have to say. And I know he's giving you the right stuff as far as right division, KJV, and, and a lot of good good stuff. And he's very good with the uh, the youth to keep them away from the stuff they shouldn't be in. And I don't mean to build you up, but it's true. You give flowers while somebody's living. But the Lord is real ultimately Amen, brother. doing the work. Okay, he's got to get the credit for it because if he be lifted up, then he'll draw men to himself. That's what's going on here. Um, where was I going with that? Completely left. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So lastly, oh, yeah. has anybody in here led anybody to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ this week? Just raise your hand. If you want to, if you don't want to be put on the spot, I don't believe in embarrassing nobody, but if you've had the opportunity. Let's, let's expand. How about this month? Oh, um, have we done it? We you got a couple? Yeah, I think so. You got, yeah. you got a couple? Yeah. yeah, that's right. The other night, we had some. Okay. Now let's, let's, how about this year, the year 2023? A little more. All right. The reason I do that is because I want you to look around and see. Our job under this current dispensation is the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, that's right, brother. That was given to us by Paul. I think he talks about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So you don't have to wait on to be called into the ministry when it comes to soul winning. You have to be called, I believe, to be a preacher. Or he may call you to be a teacher. But not a witness. You are called to do that when you're saved. And Amen. how you know that it's already written down. Amen. So don't sit around and wait on him to ring your doorbell. If you are, well, let me ring it for you tonight. Amen. Good. So two things, and I'm going to sit down. Two things. If you'll keep on, and you may have heard this before, it may be old hat for some of you, but if you'll keep two dates on your calendar to be disciplined as a soul winner, you want to keep your today's date down, like the, the things you've got to get accomplished today. Today I had to speak at a church at Morristown, and then I had to come here. That's what I had to get done today. Yep. But my other date on the calendar is the judgment seat of Christ. So if you'll keep those two dates, see, not now tomorrow, my dates, my, my schedule is going to change. I've got to pick up that RV for our traveling ministry. But then I've got the judgment seat of Christ. See, so if you keep hey, man. Calendar, perhaps you get a witness into the lady that's that's right, the brother, and the guy at the gas station, and on and on and go. Hey, Amen. You're not responsible for the salvation. You're responsible for sowing and water. The Lord will give the increase. You just have to go and tell them. That's right. Okay. Amen. So I encourage everybody in here to make a list of everybody in your family whom you're not sure you're saved or they're saved or they're your friend. Start there and go and tell them. If you don't know how to be a soul winner, well, you're going to be equipped because the material's on the table back there to point you toward a good method. Amen. Okay. So at the end of this day, then, when we all get to the judgment seat, nobody can say, well, I just didn't have the opportunity to learn. That's right. There it is. Man. All right. So I hope this is a, 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 this is a, a ministry that you all will pray about because I know there's the Lord's give, uh, given some increase in. I'm just a man. I'm just standing here looking around. Going, are, is this happening? Are you really using me? It seems to be. Man. But he's blessing it. So kind of like Moses, they, they held his arms up when he got tired. That's right. You pray for this man and hold his arms up so I can go and give out the gospel. Amen. And you got to do it as well. Amen, brother. Keep us in your prayers, okay? Hey, God bless Thank you. you. Hey, man.